end with, this is very quickly, is um, Eliza Mondegreen, who has a Substack blog uh, called Gender Hacked. Um, she put out a call to women to describe our first uh, sense of what female beauty is. And I think this is a very interesting and productive um, uh, avenue to go down. And um, so I'm going to read mine. I sent it back to her. Uh, I sent my response back to her. And I feel that trans widows have quite a bit to say because we recognize when our husbands are imitating our style sense. We realize when they've been um, borrowing, in quotes, our clothing and our makeup and appropriating our gestures, imitating our voices, imitating just the way we um, operate in the world as a natural woman and even to uh, the degree such as what Nettie did, which is to claim that he experienced my labor, my natural childbirth. So, <clears throat> a trans widow's reflections on beauty after discovery of husband's quest for his version of female beauty. Thank you, Eliza Mondegreen, for pushing my thoughts in this direction. When I discovered my then husband's three cross-dressing diaries, it was after our two sons were born. This meant my decade and a half of adulthood prior to pregnancies was over. So I was happily adjusting to my postpartum body, carrying a few extra pounds, feeling my nursing breasts wax and wane in their new role of sustaining life. My second son was only 16, 16 months old at the time I pulled three journals out of Nettie's suitcase, and I was still nursing. My older son was three. I'd become accustomed to my husband's frequent absences for business trips and walked off most of the pregnancy weight while schlepping through my schedule of laundry, grocery shopping, and exploring the best playgrounds in the heart of Brooklyn. The first postpartum childbirth months experiencing the larger bra size were already over. Somehow the mammaries learned to produce the nourishment while at the same time going back down to the pre-pregnancy size. In my decade as a professional dancer prior to motherhood, I appreciated my little breasts, knowing that more curvy dancers needed to attend to their bouncing chests in various ways during classes, rehearsals, and performances. Actually, I regarded my pre-pregnancy body as lopsided and unappealing to most men, and the commons that musicians repeatedly staged towards me were always a surprise. The kind where he says, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you're married. <laughs> One of them is kind of famous, and I suppose I could have outed him during hashtag me too. He wouldn't remember my indignant response, I'm sure. After Nettie started seriously dressing like me, using my shade of lipstick and the aqua or sage tones I often wore, I decided to branch out into other colors. Redheads can wear red, I decided. With magenta lipstick, I decided. I also bought more black. He had terrible taste in shoes, and the idea of those over-the-knee boots with a mini skirt didn't come from me. Avoiding most of Nettie's new looks was not that difficult. As I got older and went through menopause, the need to pluck facial hair bothered me for a while, knowing the extensive electrolysis Nettie invested in while claiming he couldn't pay child support. I'm over that. And when the cataract surgery is over, it will be much easier. I also love my new tweezer. <laughs> Why are good ones so hard to find? I no longer wear much makeup. I go through phases of using vitamin E oil on my skin, and then I get too busy. I wear hats to avoid sunburn and visit the dermatologist on a regular schedule. Precancerous nibs get freezed off. If one season's harvest means I've got several band-aids on my face, I'm a bit self-conscious for a few days. 
I recommend abdominal exercises and walking, both for the sense of healthy well-being and confidence with balance. I'm especially fond of Nordic walking with the sticks, which I find spiritual, as dance used to be for me. <clears throat> Oops. <laughs> Trolls have called me an ugly witch on my channel, and I laugh as I block their comments. I turn 67 in a week and find myself unconcerned regarding how much my now jowly cheeks recreate my mother's face and my crooked teeth are just like my dad's. The wisdom of a woman aging in a sure and satisfied way is a blessing. I wish us all long lives to experience this freedom. Uta Hagen. Thank you.